Live from our hurricane headquarters with real-time analysis from some of the nation's top meteorologists, this is Tracking the Tropics, powered by Bose Electric. Well, as expected, heading into the end of November, the tropics are relatively quiet. You know, there's still a low chance we could see a storm develop uh, in the middle of the Atlantic, which would be a fish storm. But now our focus is actually becoming El Nino. It's finally starting to show up the pattern of El Nino. We didn't see a ton of the pattern of El Nino that we typically see in the summertime. But heading into the winter months, we are now going to be tracking quite a few of those storm systems developing in the Gulf of Mexico. Welcome into this edition of Tracking the Tropics. I'm meteorologist Amanda Holly with the, in the WFLA Now Center, of course, joined by WFLA meteorologist Rebecca Berry as well. Second to last episode, Rebecca, can you believe it? We made it. We did. We finally <laughs> made it. It's been a year of ups and downs, uh, a lot of named storms to track here, not a lot of uh, strong storms, but overall, it's technically speaking, been an above average year. Yes, and we were talking earlier, um, it was more of a quantity over quality kind of year. Absolutely, yeah, we, we've had a lot of named storms here, uh, but a lot of them, thankfully, were fish storms. You know, we did get impacted by several storms here in Florida. Uh, we've had a, a total of, I believe, four or five United States landfalls, so there were certainly storms, uh, you know, of consequence this year, uh, but luckily a lot of the, even some of the strongest storms were out in the Atlantic. Yeah, compared to the number of storms that we had to have so few landfalls, it really does show how different the weather pattern was this year with El Nino and with those warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic and how that really played out to be fish storm after fish storm after fish storm was really interesting because that also did help to cool those waters that were so abnormally warm. It wasn't enough, but it was a step in the right direction. Yes, absolutely. So now uh, as we head into the winter months, El Nino is finally starting to take shape. So typically in the summertime with El Nino, we would have fewer storms develop because of that lower wind shear in the Atlantic. And then heading into the winter months, it translates to more Gulf systems developing. We didn't see a lot of that wind shear, but we are certainly now starting to see these Gulf systems coming in and areas of low pressure. They are picking up on some of that energy in the Gulf of Mexico and they're crossing the state of Florida. They're bringing us some much needed rainfall. So that's some really good news. We're seeing it. We saw it last week. We're going to see it again as we head through this upcoming weekend. Another area of low pressure developing on a, a pretty significant storm system that's crossing through the eastern half of the country right before Thanksgiving. So this system crosses over the state on Saturday and to Sunday. It's going to clear out. We'll have a dry day or two, and then another system will move in for the middle of next week. This is the pattern we are going to be in now for the next several months. What we see happen is an active subtropical jet stream in the winter with El Nino, and that brings those storm systems a little bit farther to the south. So this green shade that you see here, that's where some of those storm systems end up tracking in the winter, which brings more rain to parts of the south. That means it's also cloudier during the winter, bringing us on average cooler temperatures out there because of the frequent storm systems and the fronts that come through. Not necessarily because we're getting blasts of colder weather, but because we're seeing the cloudier temperature or the cloudier skies out there blocking some of that sun. And obviously with more storm systems, more cold fronts, well, it ends up being a little bit wetter, wetter across the southeast, uh, which is good news. Unfortunately, with those storm systems, though, we can see more frequent severe weather in the form of uh, stronger severe storms as well as tornadoes. So that is something we are going to have to watch with each of these storm systems that end up coming through here. But at the moment, we will take the rain, the drought across the southeast here. Uh, it is severe and uh, extreme and exceptional in some cases. Louisiana covered in the most extreme uh, category of the severe drought that you could possibly see. So we'll take the rain at this point. Here in the Tampa Bay area, we didn't see a whole lot of rain over the summer, and we have an extreme drought along the coast. That includes southern Pinellas County, coastal sections of Hillsborough, Manatee, and Sarasota as well. We're talking about some spots having the driest, uh, driest year on record so far. So we will take the rain, and it looks like we are going to get some of that, Rebecca, with, um, with some of these storm systems now coming through. But again, as they move, as these storm systems end up moving out into the Atlantic, 
For the next month or so, they could actually pick up some tropical characteristics, and could we see a name storm out of it? Yeah, it's not out of the question. Yeah, and that's really been the theme of the season. The, the season is ending as it spent most of, as we spent most of the season with the possibility of more fish storms forming. And so we still have pretty warm waters out in the southern Atlantic, but it's really where we see uh, these storms, the storm systems pushing off. It's not unusual this time of the year, especially in the fall, to see us a hurricane or a tropical system form at, off of a front pushing through. It gives it just enough mixture and just enough of rotation to, to fire up a little tropical storm and as it heads towards Bermuda, it starts to fade when it gets into those cooler sea surface temperatures. Yeah, and you know, that can happen in December. We've seen it happen in January. It happened in January earlier this year. Uh, so certainly not out of the question. We do have two names left on the 2023 list, Vince and Whitney. Don't know if we'll get to Whitney. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we had Vince form, but oh, oh, otherwise I don't think it's going to be of consequence to us here in the United States because of the frequent storm systems coming in. So, um, you know, an eventful year for sure. But now I think we're really starting to wrap things up with this hurricane season. Yes, I could not be more excited. I remember in the middle of the hurricane season talking about like that moment when you think, whew, OK, yeah, we're through it. And, and I feel like we've gotten there. I think I think we're there um, at this point for sure, because, um, you know, these these fronts that are coming through, the storm systems are going to that are going to come through. They're going to push everything out into the Atlantic very, very quickly. So uh, that's some good news. But, yeah, you know, I, I don't think we're necessarily done with the weather portion of it typically heading into the winter where you know we have these super long stretches seven to ten days of just nothing mm -hmm. which is nice it ends up being beautiful <laughs> um <laughs> but it ends up being really quiet but this year i think we're gonna see some certainly storm system after storm system uh for for a little bit anyway it does feel like el nino is playing up a bit right now uh we it's been a really really dry really really quiet season and i felt like with the last rain chances we had last week we made the turn basically yes. we made the turn towards a wetter weather pattern because now when you're looking out over the forecast every two to four days yeah. another low pressure system coming across the gulf bringing us those much needed chances rain but also you know giving us pause making sure that we know that we have the potential for severe weather or we don't with the system and looking at a lot of those parameters we'll have to be paying a little bit more attention than those quieter winters yeah for sure and the timing of the systems you know flips flops back and forth too so i think it's going to be a busy winter in terms of yeah forecasting because uh you know is it going to come through on tuesday is it going to come through on wednesday you know the gfs the european they flip flop back and forth um it'll be a it'll be an interesting winter for sure but in terms of the tropics i am i'm um, i think i'm okay saying you know we're we're in the clear at this point for the rest of hurricane season yeah i agree i think i think they may name one of those things out in the yeah. middle of the atlantic since they that's been the theme all season long we might make it through vents maybe whitney we, and you know it would it would be very true to form if we did get that, yeah. especially after season. But, Definitely. I, but I don't think it would be anything that would affect anyone. So. Well, on this second to last edition of Tracking the Tropics, I think that's going to do it for us next week. Of course, we are going to talk about a wrap up of the season. We'll talk a little bit about some of the most notable storms. Uh, we're going to talk about the storms that were just hanging out in the Atlantic, the ones that we love. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, kind of give just an overview of the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season so far. But for this edition, I think that's going to do it. Uh, so obviously, thanks, Rebecca, for joining me today. I love nerding out with you about the tropics. So much fun. Yes. And uh, I hope to see you guys next week on Tracking the Tropics. Of course, we are on Wednesdays at 1230. We'll see you then. Find Tracking the Tropics on these platforms. And for storm updates, the latest models, and helpful resources, visit trackingthetropics.tv.